Before we get started, there are two items that need to be covered that are not mentioned in the pre-flight footage. Before each flight, there are some items you need to identify. The acronym AERO can be a useful memory aid. The aircraft should have an airworthiness certificate. And it should also have a registration certificate. If embarking on an international flight, it should have onboard a radio station license from the FCC. You also need to identify the operating limitations, which might be placarded in a readily visible place or found in a manual specific to the aircraft. You also need to find the weight and balance data. In the video, when I turn on the master switch, the first thing I should have done is to check all the outside aircraft lighting. The types of lighting you should check are the navigation lights, the rotating beacon, and landing lights making sure they all work and that they're in the correct position and proper color. Navigation lights on the aircraft consist of a red light on the left wing, a green light on the right wing, and a white light on the tail. So the very first thing you do when you open the door is you turn on the master switch and then you go over here and you lower the wing flaps you also want to make sure that you check the fuel level so that you can compare the fuel levels to the levels in the actual wing tanks because you're going to dip the wing tanks with a dipstick and you're going to make sure that the, uh, the fuel levels match between the gauges and the tank. As you walk alongside the fuselage, you should be looking for any wrinkles in the skin which would indicate structural damage. And you should be looking for loose or missing rivets. Next, you need to inspect the empennage with the horizontal stabilizer and elevator and the vertical stabilizer and rudder. You're basically making sure that everything is structurally sound. What you're checking on the elevator are the hinge points. You just want to make sure that they're not loose and that they move freely. Once again, you're still checking the hinge points. You're also gonna check your cable and push up on it and make sure it's tight. You're gonna push the cable around here too, make sure it's tight. You're gonna check these cables here on your rudder control. Continue checking the cables on the rudder, make sure they're tight. Continue to make sure that the hinges move correctly and freely. Checking the hinges here on the rudder as well. I'm checking the hinge point on this side of the elevator. You also want to make sure that the antenna and lights are secure and that the lights are not cracked. Make sure that the antennas are secure and check the movement of the flap. When you look at your flap, you want to make sure the flap tracks are not worn. You want to make sure that there's free motion. So you give it a little push. You also want to make sure that these rods here have some play to them, and it does. Now the ailerons. You want to make sure that you check the hinges. 
Just make sure that they're not worn out. Make sure the pin is in correctly and not wiggling or working its way out. And you also want to make sure that this rod here has some play as well. You want to give it a little wiggle. It's got play, so it's good to go. And you want to make sure you check all of your hinges in the same manner. Now check the nav light, making sure that it's secure and not cracked. Be sure to check the strut attachment and door hinges. You need to take a look at the rear landing gear and what you're looking for or any cracks or any cuts or excessive wearing of the tires. You're also going to look at your brake lines and what you're mainly looking for is to see if there's any brake fluid that has dripped on the ground which would indicate that there is something wrong with your brakes. Next you want to take a sample of fuel from the drain under the wing, making sure the fuel is free of water and contaminants. You're also checking for the proper color. What you're checking in the engine compartment is, first of all, you're going to check the oil level right there. That's your dipstick. So let me check it. You just unscrew the dipstick. Pull it out. And check the level. You also have a fuel strainer knob. You want to get, grab hold of the fuel strainer knob and you want to give that a pull but I'm not going to do that right now because we're sitting inside the hangar. I want to wait until I pull the aircraft outside the hangar. You also want to make sure that there's not any frayed or loose wires and you're also looking for any kind of critters or bird nests that might be built up on the inside. Check the propeller for nicks or cracks and check the air intake and air filter for obstructions. Right here when you're looking at the front landing gear, you just want to make sure there's nothing cracked or broken or loose. And you might even want to give everything a good little tug or shake. Not a real hard shake, just move things around. And check the front tire for any cuts or scrapes or excessive wear. Be sure to check the fuel level by dipping the tank with a dipstick. Each tank holds 13 gallons of fuel, but only 11.25 gallons is usable. Or rather, 1.75 gallons is unusable for each tank. Right here's your static port. You just want to make sure it's clear that there's no bugs stopping it up. This here is your pitot tube and you want to do the same. You want to make sure that it's clean and clear. There's no bugs that are clogging it up either. This right here is the vent to your stall warning horn. What you want to do to make sure it works is to put some suction on it. You can use a little squeegee device or you can actually suck on it with your mouth and it'll make a sound. While I'm checking the other fuel tank, I want to back up a little and let you know that when checking the oil level on the Cessna 150G, it should be at 5 quarts for normal flight. Also check the landing light. Once 
Once again, check the aileron hinges and connections thoroughly, and then after that the flap, and then after that, check the fuel for water. Here's what water looks like in the fuel. And that completes our pre-flight.